2016 has been a scary year at the box office. Despite the box office overall declining, 2016 has had more films than ever across the 300 million domestic mark, and we still have 4 months to go. Less films are becoming hits, but the films that win, win big. The problem is that there are more big budget films than ever before, and the vast majority of them are utterly failing at the box office. Back in 2013, Spielberg predicted that Hollywood would crash when a half dozen big budget films flopped back to back. This summer, that pretty much happened. One of those flops happened to be Spielberg's own The BFG, so there's that. The key thing we have to look at is what temples are succeeding. If you compare the last two summers, their results look virtually the same. In both summers, there is a very clear top tier, with four films making more than 300 million while everything else falls below 200. Of those four, both summers contain a Marvel Studios film, a Pixar film, and a Illumination film, leaving one spot for a blockbuster action film from an iconic franchise. Essentially, there is a limited amount of temple spots, and those spots have already been filled. This also applies to the entire year, and there was a very very clear pattern on how these films break out. These 300 million grocers are evenly distributed throughout the year, with one coming exactly once a month. They devour the rest of the competition and then leave enough room for the next ten pole to break out. It's important to note that of these eight films, four are from Disney and the other four are either animated or superhero flick. I can't stress enough that these ten pole slots are quickly filling up, and Disney has a complete lockdown on them. I am currently working on a video on how Disney conquered the modern filmscape, so once that's done, you can click this annotation to watch. Now, while every summer has mega tentpoles that crush records, they also have mid-range hits that also do well. In 2015, 10 films grossed over 150 million at the domestic box office. In 2014, that number was 11. In 2016, that number has dropped all the way down to 7. That is a staggering drop, and yet the numbers only get worse. Of all the movies released this summer, these 13 had the largest budgets and needed to be hits to turn a profit. Of these 13, only 4 managed to top their budget at the domestic box office. The other 9 were financial disappointments appointments, and of these nine, four of them were outright flops. So what's the key problem that led to this? Is it because they were all sequels and reboots? Is it because they were stacked back to back? Is it because they were all particularly not that good? While all these were certainly factors, the biggest problem was their insane budgets. These insane budgets were given out to properties with less of a fan base than anticipated, or properties that never really had strong numbers in the first place. If the budgets weren't so high, some of these could have been genuine hits. The biggest example of this would be The Legend of Tarzan. Because of the history of other Edgar Rice Burroughs adaptations, this film was set to completely flop. Despite negative reviews, it managed to open much larger than expected, and had rather strong legs for July 4th opening, finishing just below the 130 million mark. The only problem is that the film had a whopping budget of 180 million. For comparison, that's the same budget as The Dark Knight. Ta -da! It's... Looking back on that July 4th weekend, it was actually emblematic of the entire summer. There were three releases. The Tarzan movie that lost money, the BFG that, again, flopped, and then there was the Purge election year. Election year came in just behind The Legend of Tarzan, despite having 1 18th of that film's budget. While the big budget films failed this summer, the low budget genre fair excelled. The gap between these two is quickly shrinking. For example, the 50 million action comedy Central Intelligence was able to go toe to toe with its 120 million count you were like Jason Bourne, man, but with jorts. Looking at the genre fair this summer, the real MVP was horror. These three films, with a combined budget of 55 million, were able to gross almost 250 million. That's incredible. All of this leads me to what I think needs to happen. There has to be some serious budget control and downsizing on these major tentpoles. This means cutting one of your $50 million action sequences. This means not greenlighting your film if it has over 3,000 visual effect shots. If you think this is shooting your film in the foot, then tell that to Deadpool, who managed to top Batman v Superman at the domestic box office despite having a fifth of that film's budget. Though, now that I think about it, shooting Deadpool in the foot probably won't do any damage. <laughs> right up Main Street! I think that with Hollywood's obsession with tentpoles, they've completely forgotten the importance of them, and their place in the modern film landscape. The best phrase to describe what makes a great temple is reliably ambitious, meaning these are films that swing for the fences, but do so in as safe an environment as possible. You shouldn't be releasing a temple that everyone expects to flop, only to relax in the fact that it only disappointed. However, therein lies the billion dollar question. How do you avoid a flop? While I wish I could say make good movies, I understand it isn't that simple. There's a great story about this that happened a decade ago with DC. After the successes of the Spider-Man and X-Men franchises, DC decided to reboot their most iconic characters, Batman and Superman. These films made roughly the same amount of money, being moderate hits for the studio. However, they only made a sequel to one of these films, 
why. For one, Superman Returns had a much larger budget, so it didn't exactly make them money, but Batman Begins wasn't a smash hit either. The important thing is that they focused on the details, that Batman Begins was a favorite of the comic book community. It had unanimously high scores on all the rating sites. It sold incredibly well on home video, and the ratings on TV were spectacular. This is why they only made a sequel to Batman Begins, and that sequel happened to become one of the highest grossing films of all time. The Dark Knight is a perfect example of reliable ambition. Again, the numbers coming from the box office are a major cause for concern, so there needs to be a course correction towards sustainability. Every genre and franchise needs to reevaluate its net worth. The massive budgets should be reserved to those who have proven themselves, and to those who haven't, they should focus on downsizing their scale. And to those who think that these films can't be epic without those large budgets, I say, bullshit, The Battle of the Bastards cost 15 million and was the most cinematic experience I've had all year. There is a silver lining here. There are more resources than ever before to track this information, and it is easier than ever to discover an audience for a film. And if all the cards line up, if all the signs are there, I hope Hollywood can bet big and be reliably ambitious. Hey there, I have these other videos that you can check out on my channel. If you like what you see here, click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Oh, and if you can make some original content for once, you know, that'd be pretty cool.